Over 43,000 people were killed on American highways last year and over 3 million injured. And the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration estimates that about 30% of those fatal crashes were due to driver distraction, totaling more than 10,000 fatalities. Those alarming statistics are driving university researchers, automakers, and Department of Transportation agencies, including NHTSA and the Federal Highway Administration, to invest in new approaches to reduce the toll from highway accidents. Enter LISA, the Laboratory for Intelligent Safe Automobiles. Located in the Jacobs School of Engineering at the University of California, San Diego, the lab and its multidisciplinary team of faculty and graduate student researchers are developing smart car systems based on onboard cameras and other sensors, computer vision processing, and new tools to assist the motorist to drive more carefully. In this lab, uh, our uh, research team uh, is interested in looking at technologies uh, which are going to improve uh, the safety of the driver, occupants, uh, as well as just the overall traffic. UCSD electrical and computer engineering professor Mohan Trivedi's initial work in the field, sponsored by Caltrans, focused on networked camera systems on highways to improve traffic flow and accident management. His team at the Computer Vision and Robotics Research Laboratory at UCSD also developed a mobile interactive avatar, a robot with sensors and two-way audio-video communications over high-speed wireless that could be deployed faster to the accident site and give emergency first responders a look at the scene even before arriving. It became clear that some of the same systems could be installed onboard cars themselves to capture the context inside and around the vehicle. Automakers were intrigued among them, Daimler Chrysler, Volkswagen, and Nissan. We are really interested in looking at the entire uh, ecology okay, of driving. So it includes drivers and drivers' interactions with other things. The initial LISA research began with a simple hypothesis that conversations between a driver and passenger in a car are safer than if the driver were talking on a cell phone because the passenger knows traffic conditions and the state of the driver so he or she can modulate the conversation or even stop talking if conditions are risky. Funded by Daimler Chrysler and a UC Discovery grant in 2001, the research aimed to see if it would be possible to monitor the driver's state and convey it to outside callers with whom they were speaking. Inside the lab, researchers equipped a Mercedes test frame with a variety of cameras and other sensors to monitor the driver's facial expressions and other parameters. Here's a uh example of the driver face effect uh, recognition system working and it's actually a real-time system that we've built. Uh, Joel McCall and other researchers developed the system to continuously monitor the state of the driver using pattern recognition to analyze different moods and convey the information instantly to the outside caller. Sending the actual video would take up too much bandwidth so instead researchers developed emoticons that could change in real time and require almost no bandwidth. The project allowed LISA researchers to explore the types, positioning, and numbers of cameras needed to best capture what's happening inside the car. But once we did that, we also realized that now there is a whole range of new problems uh, where we have to make our systems very robust, uh, and robust from the perspective of different types of background, which is going to be shining past you as you are driving, uh, things which are going to be compact because uh, real cars are going to be restricted to the uh, cockpit of the car. Uh, there are going to be things where you have to make sure that uh, sun might be coming from one side versus another side. Uh, uh, traffic which is moving on the sides might create its own noise and shadows. Uh, and to incorporate uh, all of those variations uh, into whatever system that we are developing, so they are robust to it, uh, we realized that we had to actually start instrumenting actual vehicles uh, that we can do systematic experimental trials with. The UCSD team took their research on the road, literally. They outfitted real vehicles with sensors, processing power, and computer storage. The first, dubbed Lisa P, was based on a Volkswagen Passat. The second, Lisa Q, on an Infiniti Q45. Uh, this particular vehicle right here uh, had all those appropriate sensing technologies which was able to look at the driver's effects, uh, look at the side surround, look at what is ahead of the car, what is behind the car, as well as the 18 parameters which are coming on the canvas. Uh, and we have a whole sophisticated computing lab right in the trunk of this where all of this information is going. And in real time, we are getting this synchronized capture 
of over two dozen cameras and sensors. An ongoing project funded by VW and the UC Discovery Grant program addressed an important safety problem. Although airbags have saved many lives, more than 200 people have died on U.S. roads since 1996, and many more were injured because of the impact from the airbag. Most were children or short women leaning forward at the time of the airbag's deployment. And in order to develop new types of sensing systems, uh, uh, we started instrumenting uh, Volkswagen Passat uh, with camera systems which allowed us to examine the posture of an occupant in real time, uh, utilizing different modalities of visual sensing, like stereo, like thermal imaging, or like actual three-dimensional voxelization system. In other words, the car itself could tell the airbag to deploy, deploy with less force, or not deploy at all. To determine posture, the UCSD researchers used stereo cameras and software to build a 3D volumetric description of the occupant and thermal infrared for nighttime driving. We must do that thing very accurately, and the research challenge is we must do that extremely fast. Fast, Trevetti explains, is under 20 milliseconds, a bit less than the time from impact it takes an airbag to deploy. Japanese automaker Nissan approached Trevetti and his team with a much bigger task to develop a new driver assistance system that would draw the driver's attention to possible problems while minimizing distractions. This at a time when drivers are finding more and more ways to be distracted from cell phones and DVD players to Internet access. Engineer Erwin Bohr, a Lisa consultant. Say you want to book a movie, schedule a movie, and you call up the movie theater and they give you seven uh, movies with times. For the driver to keep all that in memory, they're basically internally rehearsing. And in that process, they may lose contact of what's going on in the environment. They're cognitively so loaded that perceptually, they may be blinded to some degree. To capture and analyze the data needed to monitor the driver, car interior, and nearby cars and roadways, researchers installed more than two dozen cameras and other sensors on board the Lisa Q. So the idea there is that we would like to have a vehicle uh, which is maintaining an awareness uh, of the state of the driver, uh, the state of the traffic around the car, uh, uh, the goal of that particular uh, drive, uh, and the state of the vehicle itself, the vehicle dynamics. And incorporating all of that information, can we make some sort of uh, predictions uh, about an intentional or unintentional maneuver that the driver or the vehicle might be making? And if there is a, a maneuver which is going to lead the vehicle into an accident uh, and that the driver is not aware of, then we would like to give them some kind of alarm, some notification, so a corrective action can be made. We have developed uh, several new types of robust algorithms uh, for capturing a full 360 degree surround of a vehicle as the vehicle is moving. Uh, we have developed new types of uh, omnidirectional uh, uh, vision-based uh, motion analysis, ego motion detection uh, types of algorithms. Uh, we have also developed uh, new types of algorithms which allow us to do lane detection, lane tracking. The project goes well beyond computer vision, though, into areas of cognitive science, signal processing, even psychology. Trivedi turned to the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology and its interdisciplinary team of researchers at UCSD working on intelligent transportation and telematics. Over the years, a number of groups have shown that uh, when you're driving and doing some distracting tasks, that the overall performance of your uh, driving is degraded somewhat. But what they haven't really been able to sort out is whether that occurs because you're switching back and forth, whether you're doing both of them and some mental resources are shared between the two tasks. Psychology professor Hal Pashler is an expert on human attention and multitask modeling. So we're doing the kind of fine-grained studies that help us to figure out what's actually causing the interference and with luck ultimately be able to, to reduce it somewhat. We've set up a uh, simulator in which uh, people drive a basically a fairly simple uh, uh, course and uh, following a lead car, and the lead car periodically breaks and they have to uh, avoid hitting the car. Uh, there's also some steering involved there, and we have people do a variety of other tasks that require making a quick response, uh, and we look at, the, at uh, 
how the driving suffers depending on how close in time and in what direction the two events in the driving and in the other task are situated. Over the past two years, more than 100 subjects have taken test drives on the simulator. In one version, the program assessed how quickly a test subject hit the brake pedal when a car up ahead slows down or another event intervenes. Our first line of research was to understand whether the braking task is affected by these other tasks, and that seems to be pretty clear that yes, it is. Our next step, our current step, is to try and uh, augment information to drivers so that the braking task is either less affected or not affected. We find that there are some critical bottlenecks. Certain kinds of mental operations are always done one at a time, even if they're things you would judge intuitively trivial and easy, like just deciding. And they tend to focus on the planning of actions rather than perception or producing responses. So people can produce actions and perceive stimuli all at the same time in parallel without any problem. But when it comes to planning two distinct actions, that's often done sequentially, one at a time. And so for us, the exciting thing here is to try to see do these bottlenecks occur in the driving context just as they occur in these more elementary laboratory tasks that we've focused on. The goal is to figure out how to use this information to bring it to the driver's attention in such a way as to improve his performance rather than to um, rather than just to um, disorient him or lead him to um, uh, focus on the warning itself. The task of figuring out which interfaces work best to enhance a driver attention and safety well, fell to this man. Uh, there's a lot of rich possibilities for new kinds of interfaces. Jim Holland, a cognitive scientist at UCSD, is an expert on human-centered design of interfaces. With Trevetti's group, his research team designed detailed experiments to help develop ethnographic models of driving behavior. So far, over two dozen test subjects have each driven the Lisa Q on 90-minute driving runs on San Diego freeways. The sensory system of Lisa Q was successful in collecting and recording audio and visual records of the driver's behavior what they were looking at, where their hands and feet were at all times, vehicle surround, what was in front, behind, and around the vehicle, the vehicle's location, and over 18 vehicle dynamics parameters, about a quarter of a terabyte of information from a single experimental run. For us, the opportunity to have rich, detailed visual records of real-world behavior of uh, participants is quite an exciting possibility for understanding uh, the phenomena well enough to really build interfaces that support rather than hinder people in their activities. For example, with the active cruise control, where now uh, the car just adjusts its speed. We could take that same information that the radar is providing and provide it to the driver in a different way. For example, by having force feedback on the accelerator pedal so that one could literally sort of feel things out in front of you. As you got closer to something, uh, it would, you'd have to push down on the accelerator more. So we're in a sort of preliminary stage of that, of sort of trying to understand the phenomena enough and understand people well enough uh, so that we can explore alternative kinds of interface technology for supporting them. When we want to assist a driver or make any decisions to, to make the, uh, the vehicle intelligent, you know, the, the tolerance for errors is much lower. Bhaskar Rao is a UCSD electrical engineer and expert in signal processing, which becomes vital when there may be dozens of sensors on board, and the data must be accurate and instantaneous to ensure the right safety decision. Rao has also developed novel algorithms for analyzing the intent of the driver's lane change operation. Currently, his group is working with Trevetti's to extend and evaluate those mathematical formulae for real-time operation on board the Lisa Q one of the benefits of multidisciplinary research. By interacting with people who are not typically electrical engineers, I get to uh, learn about issues that probably I would not otherwise be even thinking of. And that certainly factors into my research. What we're having to do is to see uh, complex activity from many different perspectives if we're going to understand it in a way that we can design systems that really you know, make it a safe place for drivers and make it a comfortable, enjoyable place to be. And you just need a different set of concepts than what we're familiar with. So it's an exciting chance to get exposed to a variety of different uh, disciplines, perspectives on, on the problem of driving. With nearly 35 faculty and graduate students involved, the Laboratory for Safe Intelligent Automobiles and the vehicles deployed so far are creating a capability that exists on no other campus. These were done uh, as they were developed as general purpose test beds. Uh, the types of things that we have put in there are in some sense over sensorized 
and over interfaced. We want to add as many things that we can dream of uh, and then do whole range of studies uh, and optimally choose the right kinds of things for whatever might be a specific need somebody might have. For instance, currently we are not really looking at a thing associated with say sleepy driver. But we already have everything that is needed for us to do say blink rate analysis or the driver posture analysis which might be indicative of a person going to get sleepy or drowsy. Among some of the new areas LISA researchers hope to tackle, systems customized for drivers on city streets rather than highways, technology tools to offset slower reflexes as seniors age, and getting smart cars to talk to each other and to smart infrastructure. Now we are coming to a stage where we can actually have cars uh, which are talking to other cars which are in and around them as well as cars which can talk to the infrastructure like the bridges, like the intersection, like the roadways uh, and can we utilize uh, information which is coming on these wireless channels uh, from this larger uh, uh, context uh, and develop uh, smoother and safer traffic flow is one of the key issues that we want to investigate in the future. A goal that has global implications, given a recent World Health Organization report that roughly 1.2 million people die each year on roads worldwide.